uh, you mentioned the schedule change. We're not going to be playing, you know, the Devils and the Buffalo Sabres, you know, eight plus games a year like we did last year. That's something that hasn't been talked about too much. We've talked about, hey, we've got a condensed schedule. We've got the Olympics thrown in there. We're going to have the long road street streak to start the season. I yeah. think it's interesting also you bring up no longer are we going to be playing some of the cellar dwellers, the worst teams in the NHL for a time period of almost 16 games and a shortened season. We're not going to have that advantage this next year. I think that's a very interesting point. You brought up, hey, how Varlamov set the uh, the Islanders franchise record for most shutouts and how we might be singing a different different tune. When we played in the first round, we wound up playing the uh, empty net, which was Tristan Jari. Yeah, we were outplayed. That went absolutely, we were absolutely outplayed. We were outplayed in the first four games of the Boston series when Carlo got injured. It started to switch. And then the Islanders gained this weird sort of confidence because I was like, there's not a chance in hell this team can go the distance. But after that game six against Boston, there was this weird switch in gameplay. Like they all of a sudden, they at least had stretches where they were dominating because I had zero faith. And I'm just going to take it to the comparing last year's playoffs, this year's playoffs. Anybody who defends any sort of point that last year, by the way, here comes the, my grump. Um, anybody who defends last year, because usually when I bring up Taves, people say, well, what do you mean? Nothing was lost. We were the top defense and uh, we made it one game further. All you need to do is go look at the games from when we played in that playoff bubble to this year. Other teams could get nothing going. You talk about Florida, do you, every single game, under 30 shots, under 30 shots, under 30 shots. In the deciding game seven against Philadelphia, under under 20 shots, was it? We were shutting teams down. This year, they're conceding 50 shots, 45 shots, 50 shots, and there's chances left and right. Game five against Pittsburgh, rewatch it. Game five against Boston, literally hanging on for dear life, and that was not the case. And then also trying to claim that we were the top defense in a shortened season when we're just raking up shutouts against the Devils. You saw what happened when they had to play increased competition. The defense as a whole was considerably worse this year. Your, your eyes will not lie to you. Any playoff game, teams had no trouble getting chances versus the Islanders from the first game all the way to the last game. And it was like the fact that people can't see that is bewildering to me. Well, it's because they have vision problems, and the only thing that corrects them is to wear your orange and blue glasses <laughs> where everything is perfect in the world. Um, second line defensively did not foot the bill. And there is a key cog on that second line that I, I, I just – really. I, I, look, we'll do this in a – I have no – I'm operating as like a guy who took his glasses off and I just see Islanders players blur. I have no, like the reason I yell about Taves, I don't like how he raised his kids. I don't, I don't care about, I'm talking about what I'm seeing with my own two eyes as somebody who played, watched for generations. Like Josh Bailey is a 100% liability and all he offers, what he offers now, because I don't do that whole, oh, but the uh, leadership thing. And uh, just like that did, that just like that worked for the Rangers and Callahan. And when they just chucked him, they finally made it to the cup. And then they brought in Drury and had to buy him out. So take that aside. All he can do is make good passes when given time. He's not strong on the puck. He's not strong on the boards. And the area he murders us the most. And I swear to you, Go go to my Twitter once every month. You'll just say, yep, they ruin that one, ruin that one, ruin that one, is as the lefty uh, quarterback on the power play. He doesn't have the finesse to – he forces pass after pass after pass, and he can't one time, which means – you ever wonder why how Ryan Pulak is not just ripping in missiles like Ovechkin or Stamkos? It's because they know there's not the threat of a lefty one-timer like Kucherov or like how they set up uh, – you know, Carlson, you need somebody on the other side. And when they know Bailey cannot one time it and he has no shot and he forces passes through, he is a power play to ruiner. It, it, it is. And maybe this year you'll watch a little closely. I'll just text you every time. Did you see that one? Did you see that one? I could even show you in the playoffs. Even when he got lucky, he just throws it off his skate and it goes in. I don't care that it goes in. That's not a repeatable play. It's and it's not. I understand he's been here a long time. He goes to my friend's restaurant. It has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about the player that I see out there. And someone's like, did you see those uh, points in the playoffs? Yes, the line played great and secondary assists I can get if I win a face-off, you know? 
Oh, like, you goodness. agree completely. You could agree completely with us on that one. I know maybe maybe you might be even a little bit more negative towards Josh Bailey than Grumpy is. He's my secret hope that the Islanders are getting a true scoring winger. Is that if they somehow can convince like some of the idiots who think he's like a godsend, maybe all those idiots on Twitter's purpose was served because one of these GMs goes to Twitter and goes, you know what? This guy might be pretty damn good, and then trade for him. Maybe that will be the beautiful, you know, karmic nature of all this, and I could finally sleep a sigh of relief. No, it won't happen. And I just don't want this team and this situation to be something we look back on five, six, ten years down the road when we're going to hit the dark and rough times. And boy, oh boy, will they be dark and rough. But we all understand it now. I don't want us to sit back and think, Oh, damn, maybe if we just would have made that one move, maybe if we would have gone a little bit outside the box, maybe if we said, Josh Bailey, Kyle Palmer, we need to go ahead and make a drastic move. We need a guy who can go ahead and really pick corners extremely well because Matt Barzal is going to open up space. He's got the speed, and we've got Anders Lee to park his body in front of the net. We need a guy who can pick corners. We need a guy like Vladimir Tarasenko. And if that was us not including Kyle Palmer, I wanted us to make that move. I yes. think we needed to make a big so, move. So I, I will tell you right now, I think – you will believe that's going to be a lot less of the case if our current stable of six defensemen is our starting six defensemen because there are no nine games against Buffalo and Devils to save us this year. The Islanders' defense was considerably worse. Considerably worse. Go ahead, guy at home. Keep sh- put, Circle the number on your screen in the shortened fake season where you play the Devils eight games in a row. Watch them against any playoff team. Chances were a-flying, okay? And now you're removing... A- now, look, Letty... I thought Letty was perfect as what he a third a third pairing defenseman. You have no pressure on you. Him and Boychuk or him and uh, Green. I loved every minute. Everything was so perfect. And that's why every team was shut under thirty shots. Under thirty shots. E- Go look at those playoffs, man. Until they played Tampa, who was a juggernaut. Every game under thirty shots. It's because we had two shutdown pairings, and our third pairing used to be our first pairing. Like that's that's where we were at, and now we're looking at half of that chopped off. God forbid one of the top two loses their time. Then what? You throw Mayfield. Who are we rolling out there as our bottom two pairs? I mean, think about it. Think about it. Right. Last year, Mayfield and Luddy were not good together. Yeah. And oh, Mayfield- and by the way, that was my big. Re- and that was my last seed of proof about Taves because Taves made it easy to work with. He was so smooth. And then everyone goes, "What's wrong with Scott Mayfield?" And I'm right back there, just. Pulling my hair out right from this, right, right from the roots. Yes, I, I've said that to people. They tell me I'm crazy, but it's true. He made Scott, he made Scott Mayfield a better defenseman. And it'll be interesting now, though, right? You're looking at Dobson playing on your second pairing with who? I got Andy a weird Green? sniff. I got a weird feeling that it's Don't either going it. to be. It's Don't either going to be Sammy Vatanen. Ah, he said it. Or no, no, no. But my sniff is that freaking Char is going to want to do a one-year deal. And yeah. when you talk about Mayfield, and, and dude, this isn't some fan in me talk. I don't care. I'm just saying when he, if he wants to play one more year in the Northeast for a contender, because it's something with his family he said it has to be in the Northeast. So he's not going back to Boston. He's not going back to Washington. What other team is close from there? Yeah, you're talking. You're talking. Maybe any of the New York teams there, the Rangers, Devils, and Islanders. But yeah, he's he's finished. Can't play. Can't play anymore. Can't play anymore. If if you were to play him on a hey, you come off the bench. Didn't he play every game last year? He did. Oh, he 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 can't play. Man, oh man, how many times you watch the games too? Matt Barzal made him look foolish a few times when they were playing the Capitals. I was like, holy sh. Obviously, I was like, man, oh man, Barzal's taking a huge step. Maybe I was just like, uh, maybe I was overplaying, you know, the level that Chara still skates at. He can't skate anymore. He just can't skate anymore. You know, he's 43 years old. I mean, he just can't skate anymore. The fact is, you know where everyone's going to play. On every single line, there is no competition for open spots. That, that is one conceptual item that I, I've always had an issue with. And again, 
if you're looking at the lineup they won, if you're a younger player, and again, albeit there aren't many that I think could fight or vie for a spot. I'm a Otto Koivula honk. But if you're if you're a younger player in Bridgeport and you look at the lineup the way it's currently constituted, you think to yourself, it doesn't matter what I do in camp, I could throw up 50 goals and 50 assists in a matter of 10 games in, tr- in preseason. doesn't matter what happens. The lineup's already cemented in. I've, Devontae, never, been Tate, I've never been a big fan of that. And it's the reason why, Andy, you're going to agree with us on this. It's the reason why Devon Taves, after shoulder surgery, spent half of the year down there in Bridgeport, despite having the best preseason, he still spent half the year down there in Bridgeport until Thomas Hickey got injured and he finally got his chance, even though he was ready to step up immediately into that role. It's the same reason why Lucas Pisa played nine games and Adam Pellick didn't start the season when Barry Trotz originally came. That type of slow inability to immediately put the best player in always drives me nuts. Yeah. You said you don't get along, though, with Islander fans. Now, yeah, most of them. Most of it stems from this wasteland, which you guys probably have to live on a little bit, known as Twitter. It's when you read the words, it makes you sick. You, you know that, that classic thing when you go to a game and a guy's watching the power play, he's just screaming, shoot it? <laughs> I can't like grumpy. handle people like this. Because that means they don't know the. Oh, you're right. The defenseman who's been waking up every day of his life at 4:30 in the morning and knows exact shooting lanes and what needs to happen to release a shot. You're right. He doesn't know. But guy in section 325 with an awful view of things knows when to shoot the puck. I I, I can't. And, and that is a. That's a lot of Islander fans. I'm sorry to say it. I call them the, the I call them the carnies. I have a name for. Them. Here's the thing. I'm one of those. And I'm going to tell you what. Hey, look and, at that. Doesn't and, mind admitting it. He's one of those. That's why 